Hi, my name is Brad Jones. I'm a clinical veterinarian with the University of Nebraska. I'm stationed at the Great Plains Veterinary Educational Center in Clay Center, Nebraska. Today we're going to talk about use of antibiotics in food producing animals. Come with me and we'll see how it's done. Every day these cattle are evaluated for health. So, not by a veterinarian, but usually by trained personnel within the feed yard. Cattle that are sick generally have respiratory disease. They tend to breathe more labored and faster than before. So if cattle tend to be depressed, if they have feed refusal or seem to lack an appetite, and they have changes in their respiration, those cattle are identified to, to have a further evaluation. So they'll be removed from the pen, they'll be taken to a facility where they can be restrained. Each calf that comes through this facility is weighed in a scale that's behind the chute. Um, there's actually a, a, a reader that reads uh, his individual identification tag. All of that information is transferred to the computer. So examination of this calf um, oftentimes involves using a stethoscope, uh, taking a rectal temperature and determining its body temperature. Cattle can have increased respiratory sounds, they can actually have absent respiratory sounds. So if their lungs aren't functioning normally, air doesn't move throughout parts of the lungs and will actually not hear sounds in those areas. After that's done, based on his weight, um, antibiotics will be administered very specifically based on his body weight. Considerations associated with the antibiotics that we're going to be used are based on several things. So one thing, sometimes in a group of cattle we will actually isolate the organism from the animal and after we isolate that organism it will undergo antibiotic susceptibility testing. And so when we've, when we've undergone antibiotic susceptibility testing, it'll tell us a group of antibiotics that we can use that we hope will be effective in treating respiratory disease. All effective antibiotics for bovine respiratory disease are only available by prescription. Those antibiotics are very important for the well-being and treatment of animals with respiratory disease. Records are very important. So again, every animal is individually identified. Every animal treatment is identified on the computer record and slaughter withdrawals are recorded. Those records are checked before the animal enters the truck and leaves the yard for harvest to make sure that there will be no residues in the food that we eat. All animals are individually treated with injectable antibiotics. There are no labels for treating individual animals in the feed and we do not, uh, we do not breach that. Antibiotics are packaged in a manner that they, they, they have multiple doses for individual animal treatment. It lists on there precautions. Also the label has indications for use. This one is indicated for respiratory disease in cattle. It has the dose both in milligrams per pound of body weight, also in milliliters quantity per hundred pounds of body weight, and it includes a slaughter withdrawal. How long that you have to wait after administration before you can harvest the animal. We inject antibiotics either in the muscle or under the skin. Wherever we give the antibiotics, those antibiotics are absorbed in that site. Based on the particular properties of the antibiotic, they're distributed throughout the system. Our hope is, is we pick an antibiotic that is distributed in high levels within the lungs. We choose, the FDA actually chooses withdrawal times that far exceed the chance of there being residue in the meat when we consume it. So residues are monitored by a particular branch of the United States Department of Agriculture called the Food Safety Inspection Service. So they act as a third party between producers, packers, processors, and the consumers to monitor for residues in the food. In almost two decades, there's been no residue of concern in any food product. That would be milk, meat, and cheese, and eggs. The resistance is actually tracked by the Center for Disease Control. I'm very concerned about resistance to antibiotics. You know, there are many people in the United States every year that are affected with food fo foodborne diseases simply due to how we handle meat or improperly cook meat. If the, if the bacteria that those individuals are affected with are highly resistant, it certainly affects the outcome to treatment and it affects their long-term health. I think the important thing is to think about the antibiotics and how they're used to treat humans. And so, Antibiotics and their use for humans are categorized as critically important, highly important, and simply important. And if we have several antibiotics that are effective against an organism, I would tend to choose a one that would have less of an impact in treating humans. So we've moved from the feed yard and now we're actually at a, a, a confined swine operation. The use of antibiotics is actually the same. So we determine a need for antibiotic use either based on um, examination by a veterinarian or examination by trained personnel. 
If it's done by examination by trained personnel, whether it's in the feedlot or whether it's in this operation, uh, they limit their use of antibiotics to written treatment protocols based on the diseases that they have that they have assessed to that animal. Our hope is within this facility that we only need to treat very few pigs. So we individually identify those pigs associated with treatment. At times, we would medicate the whole room. We talked about keeping records on individual animals. Well, those individual animal records are also grouped within the database based on room or group. In this instance, it's based on room. If we get to a level where we're treating about 10 or 15 percent of the pigs, if we're expecting that treatment rate to continue, and it is, we want to control the disease before all of the pigs are affected. Just like in cattle, pigs that are sick, it is an issue with their comfort and their welfare. And we want to make sure that we halt the disease in a period of time by which all of the pigs remain uh, relatively thrifty and healthy. But certainly within in this building, prevention is paramount. So pigs are brought into this room. They're all the same size. They're all the same age. Before they're brought into this room and the last group left, this room is disinfected thoroughly. And so they're brought into a disease-free environment. And so disease spread within this situation is not common. But the FDA truly is in charge. They have regulations and rules that are both real and tough. And at the forefront, it puts veterinarians in charge of antibiotic use. So there are real penalties. There are real consequences, not only to the producer, but also to the veterinarian if those laws aren't followed. I think the, the use of antibiotics in our industry is appropriate. I would also use the term responsible. It's appropriate for animal well-being and comfort. It's appropriate to, to treat certain diseases that affect animals. And how we utilize antibiotics and the decisions that we make when we give them um, have a lot of thought behind them. Not only thought because we're mandated to because of laws and rules, but they have thought because we understand the importance of maintaining use of antibiotics within our industry for the health and well-being of the animals.